Well, this is a weekend many of us look forward to Sunday at 2 a.m. It's time to fall back. Our clocks go back an hour and some of us think the, uh, you know, the extra hour is good for sleep. Kathy's already ready to get an extra yeah, hour of Dr. sleep. Dr. Cam Atwell with Invented <laughs> Health is here. She's brought us some sleep aids. I had to pick this up right away. <laughs> Tell me what difference this is going to make, doctor. It looks good on you, by the way, <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> so, it's making me very uncomfortable. I don't know where to look. <laughs> Obviously, when we want a good night's sleep, we want it to be dark and we want it to be quiet and we want it to be cool. And I always tell people like having your bedroom temperature between 62 and 65 really helps you sleep and people might say well it's cold outside my toes get cold so wear your warm fuzzy <laughs> socks but keep it at 62 to 65 because remember as the temperature is lower in your bedroom that will induce much better sleep and sounder sleep and that's imperative particularly with this uh, time change do you agree with this thinking i always do it on saturday mm -hmm. night i think i could stay, stay up, up an late. hour later because i get an hour yeah. back is that right you know what most people think that way kathy but it's actually a misnomer because really it's society's imposed jet lag that is the problem so we don't really gain an hour and we shouldn't really think of it as gaining an hour i tell people usually tonight go to bed half an hour later wake up a little bit later then tomorrow night do the same thing and therefore your the internal clock then is going to be um, in sync with the external clock. Mm -hmm. So really it's not an hour extra sleep, it's actually an hour of disturbance that can last a whole week and really impact our physical and mental well-being. Mm. You know what I find interesting is always the, the Monday after at work, some people say they're hugely affected by the time change and other people not so much. I mean, are some of us more predisposed to be affected by the time change than others? Very good um, point, um, Ashley. That is so true. There are some of us that are very, very adaptable and there's some of us that are not so adaptable. Mm -hmm and it's very variable but you know studies have shown that it's a little bit easier to make the time adjustment in the fall than it is in the spring but that first week is very difficult for people and it's variable particularly in living in the northwest it can be dark and gloomy too so that time adjustment's even more difficult you have people you refer to as short sleepers or larks mm -hmm. and you say they have the most trouble adjusting right describe them so short sleepers or larks they like to go to bed early and get up early so what i'm telling you now for the time change is to go to bed later so they're going to have a harder time going to bed later and they're going to wake up a lot earlier than they should be. And so one thing that I always say to try to make your internal clock mimic what the external clock is, vitamin D is very important in the winter months because we don't get a lot of sunlight exposure and low vitamin D will contribute to disturbed sleep and light exposure. So right now, uh, as we hear, the weather looks great. It's sunny out there. So this is a great time for the time change. So in the daytime, when you're feeling a little fatigued and tired, get out in the bright sunlight or get yourself one of those um, desk lights. And by the way, that glass of Merlot at, in the evening isn't helping me sleep. No. So <laughs> another very good point, Ashley. Ashley actually listens to everything I tell her. I do. I she? take yeah. notes. Hey, I'm going to get a mask. So avoiding alcohol, caffeine, and really, you know, that meal that you have at the end of the day, make it at least three to four hours before bedtime because if you have that large meal close to bedtime, your digestion is going to be working at night and that will lead to disturbed sleep also. Quick last question. Just a yes or no here. If you could, would you do away with daylight saving time? I think most of us in the sleep industry say do away with the sleep, uh, with the time change. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. I think okay. it's healthier mentally and physically. Dr. Cam Atwal, always good to see you. Thank you, girls. Sleep well. <laughs> Thank you. You too. Thank we'll you. Try. <laughs>